Hey guys, welcome to Sugar on Sunday right here on the Digital Outlook channel. And guys, I hope you've been having an amazing, amazing weekend. It has been something else. Judy and I are doing some rentals in the house and boy, we were just running around getting all kinds of things done and prepared and ready for the workers that are coming here on Monday morning. And I'll tell you guys, no matter what, it does not, just the smallest things seem like they can take the biggest chunks of time, I'll tell you what, right now. Now guys, I really have something that I want to share with you that is on my heart and I think it's really, a, you know, actually pertinent for where we are right now in history in the wide world and especially over the next few weeks with everything that's going on, especially at home here in the United States. I think most of you know what I'm talking about. Guys, I want us to take a look at a few short little verses out of Proverbs here, and we're going to talk about Proverbs 3, and we're only going to be reading about maybe four, five, six of these, not too many, but guys, I'll tell you what, if we could just grab a hold of this, really start to employ this into our personal lives, I'm telling you, I think it'll absolutely change the focus and direction of where we actually are going in life, that is for sure. Now listen to this right here, it's Proverbs 3, we're going to start at verse 1, and this is what he says, he says, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace will they add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and will be strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Now, guys, there are other verses to that, that passage of Scripture, but I thought it would just be important to focus on these. The first thing I see there, guys, is this. We all want to live long, healthy, prosperous, and just grace-filled lives. I think that is like the desire of most people. Now, I have coached hundreds and hundreds of people personally, and I can tell you, basically, if you were to narrow it down into a nutshell, that right there is really their focus, their aim, their goals in life, long life, health, you know, just doing well financially, and of course, having favor in life. And guys, it tells us how to get it right there. Truly, it does. I mean, if you want a formula for genuine success, that's it right there. I'll tell you what, because it says, hey, my son, keep my commands. Keep them right close to your heart. Don't forsake truth and all of that kind of stuff. Bind it around your neck and mercy. Don't forsake that. Let it be like the wellspring that of, your, of your life. You know, we feel so vulnerable with things about our neck, don't we? And what the Lord is really saying is, hey, have that heart attitude. Be vulnerable. Don't forsake truth. Go out there and pursue it, guys. It is so easy for most of us to literally turn, oh, the truth is hard. The way of being true is so tough because it just seems like, hey, all the people that are dishonest and all this and that have zero character. Well, they just seem to go on their merry way and this and that. Guys, I know it looks that way, but I'm going to tell you something right now. I have witnessed it in my own life. I've witnessed it in other people's lives and on and on. You get known for having a poor character. Guess what? Doors close. People don't trust you. You actually start, it, the bite does come. It may not be immediate, but boy, I'll tell you, do you do feel the bite down the road for, for having that kind of reputation? And it can take so much to restore a reputation that's been damaged like that. I mean, how many of us have said, hey, look, it takes years to build up trust, but one moment to lose it just like that. Yep, guys, integrity is a gift that we give ourselves, isn't it?
And it's where there's no compromise on those issues. We're not going to just like skate the line as much as we can. And especially as it pertains to our relationships with one another. And this is a pandemic. I mean, if there has ever been an epidemic of, you know, massive proportions, it has got to be in the trust factor of the world. Do we really trust what we're hearing on the news? No, guys, we don't. Do we really trust that when we take our car into the mechanic, we're going to get an honest report? Oftentimes, no. Guys, we don't even trust the people that we're selecting to be the lead over us, do we? I mean, you got whole groups of people that don't trust the other group and this and that. And why? Well, guys, because we've been once bitten and now we're twice shy. Isn't that the way it is? And this is where I'll tell you. You will shine like a light in the absolute darkness if you decide to walk in integrity and truth. Why? Because it's so rare. That's why it is so rare. I remember when I was an investigative officer, and I'll tell you, you could discern a truth from a lie just like that. Do you know why? Because you heard lies all day long that the moment you heard the truth, there's a difference here. You knew it. And that's how I kind of look at it, guys. And who do we want to be? We want to be people of character, people of truth. Now, is there a cost for being that? Yes, there's a cost for being that. You may not be liked so much around that big old crowd, right? You might not be, you might not get the opportunities you thought you were going to get because, hey, you're not willing to step on other people to get there, number one, and all that kind of stuff. Plus, hey, they don't want people sitting around the table that makes them feel uncomfortable when they're out there doing all their mischievousness, which I've been in those places, guys. I've seen it happen and how unwelcome I felt at those tables. And boy, were they ever glad to see me go and that type of thing why because hey nobody wants to if we want to you know be out there doing all this we don't want somebody out there that we don't know that is going to like keep that confidence about all the misdeeds we're doing and people of integrity usually guys they're not going to want to be around them either now think about this it's not just competency that matters guys it's character it's character that matters and if you want long life as the word of god promises and peace peace health and good days. Guys, invest in being people of character. Now, next to that, it says this. Hey, listen, you know, honor the Lord. Get that one with the first fruits of all your increase. So why your barns be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Now, I have seen this happen in my life. You really, really cannot outgive God. Learn to be generous in your spirit, generous with your finances, generous with your time. Because I'll tell you what, that's something that some people really do recognize, guys. And they learn that. But not only that, even when you're doing it behind closed doors and it's done in secret, hey, God sees. And he rewards those. Bible says that, the, that you know, he who gives to the poor lends to the Lord and the God is a debtor to no man. In fact, he says he will reward you. What's done in secret, he rewards you openly. I have seen that happen. Now, we don't do it to get the reward, of course, but you just develop the attitude of being a giver. Judy and I, we would go around and we would literally say we are tithers and we are givers and we have blessed so, so many and with a joyful heart, really, in doing it. And guys, there's something about it that just liberates you on the inside. You're not trapped by all the trappings of life, you know, and all these possessions because, hey, you're so willing that you might even give them away. Look, I remember one time I had this Shaquille O'Neal rookie card. And I remember when I got it because I was, you know, collecting basketball cards at the time. And I remember where I was when I purchased that and I opened up that package and there it was, that rookie card. And I really treasured that thing. Well, years had gone by and one of my very close friends, it was his birthday, but I was, you know, pretty like down. I was broke, kind of almost. Well, I'll tell you what I did. I took that thing that meant so much to me and I gifted it to that person, that friend of mine. And I'll tell you what a joy it was for him to have it and I had it in pla I had it inside a little plastic sleeve and I had it inside a kind of plexiglass frame all tightly together so it was mint mint condition and I'll tell you it was a joy for me to give that and I remember that feeling and the relief that it gave me now that was something I really treasured but you know there was a time where I I was willing to release that and give it away 
and learn to be a giver. And guys, I've seen that happen in my own life now. Hey, have I gotten spades back and stuff like that? And this person has been my longest friend in my life. In my lifetime, I've known this person since I was literally just a just a young kid, you know, probably 13 or less, something like that. And hey, I'm 56 now. So there you go. Practically what? Almost what? Uh, I guess 43 years or something like that. You know, big, big deal. And he's still a very important part of my life. And I'll tell you what, I treasure it. But guys, that's something. That's a memory I have of really being young and learning how to be a giver. And it is such a big deal. Now, God is faithful. He said, see if I will not open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out on you such blessing, you will not even have room to receive it. And it talks about, hey, when we honor the Lord and we honor his word in our life, he is health to our flesh and strength to our bones. Guys, what are we seeing there as a formula? Well, hey, you know, having favor and many good days, long life and peace. Hey, having health and strength and vitality, having a good reputation and, and growing in esteem within God and man. Right there, big, big time deal. And literally learning to be a giver and so much so that you're sowing seed in life that when you need a harvest, wow, there it is. Guys, I'm telling you, it is not that difficult to grasp what it takes to really you know, be blessed in this life in a powerful way. God tells us how. The deal is this, we have to crucify the flesh to do it. We do. And that is the hard part. And a lot of people, you know what? They don't want to go through the pain to get there. They don't trust it. They make every kind of other excuse of why not to do it. No, 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 no. Why don't you give it a shot? Why don't you try it out? Why don't you see if God's word is true in that capacity or if it isn't? I'll tell you what. I have proved that it's true and I've learned to stick with it. Now, I've shared this analogy before, but when I was going through a real hard time, a friend of mine, he had brought over this fax machine and gave it to me. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do with this thing? I took it down to a pawn shop. I pawned it off, brought home this Yamaha guitar. I thought, well, here's an opportunity to learn how to play. I was going through a really ugly divorce at the time, and I thought this would be a great distraction for my mind. Well, I'll tell you what, every time I put my fingers on those strings there, they got sore and sore and sore. And the thing is this, I thought I was never going to learn how to play them one day. Bang. My fingers went exactly where they needed to go because I would have to look where to put them before, but they went exactly where they Of course, that is muscle memory. But a little bing went off in my little, my little pea brain over here. <laughs> and this was the bing. Look, guys, in life, when we want to really do something and there's some big time changes, well, there might be some pain involved in that. But if we could just stick with it long enough, it becomes effortless. Do you know why most people don't achieve their goals in life? It's not because they're unattainable. It's because they lose the resolve to do it. Guys, stick with it. Stick with it like steel. As Jesus said, he set his face like flint towards Jerusalem, knowing what was on the other side of him going there, guys, which was Calvary, of course. But he did it. Why? For the sake of what he would gain. That was you and I. That was you and I. Think of all of the people in your life that will be touched and blessed because you would not give up. Bang, right there. Now, guys, let me just take a few seconds to bless you. Father, I want to thank you in the name of Jesus for every living person. Lord, every living soul that is hearing and seeing what we're talking about today. And Lord, I pray that by your spirit, you would encourage them to keep on keeping on and to not give up, but to press on to take a hold of that for what your word says that Christ Jesus took a hold of them to achieve the goal, the maturity, the prize, and to see the fruit of all of that labor, your love, your joy, your peace, your provision, and all of those things. May they walk in that level of faith and growth and be absolute overcomers and lord if the enemy is tormenting them with guilt and shame from falling down remind them that even if you fall down seven times it's the lord who lifts you back up don't ever let them lord encourage them to that they would not give up just keep on going keep on going and one day lord like your word says they are going to overcome and so i thank you for that and i bless them now in jesus mighty name well guys i sure hope you really did get some amazing encouragement out of that i know when i meditate on that 
I myself have got that kind of encouragement. And just that's the deal. You get out there, you encourage yourself to keep moving, guys. Keep standing up. Keep getting back up. Keep you know, keeping on, as we say. And I'm telling you, you're going to make it. You are absolutely going to make it. So, guys, I sure hope your weekend's been going fabulous. And until tomorrow, when we're going to have an amazing coffee chat. I have no doubt about it. And hey, tomorrow as well, we got Turning Point and we got a really special guest showing up tomorrow on Turning Point with us. And then, of course, we're going to have our evening video until later on, guys, until we get to meet again like that. I pray you're having a fabulous one and take care.